Hey, 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 welcome to the Really Charlie Podcast here. I'm Charlie Perry, here to give you some facts, some black history from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, I just noticed a typo in that title. Hmm, I gotta fix that. Anyways, it is February and it's Black History Month, and... I always want to celebrate the month, but I took it a little further, I had a little twist to it, and I figured I'd gather some black history from my hometown, New Bedford, Massachusetts. The um, Today's topic is, uh, we're going to be talking about Marcelino, Manuel de Grape, de Graca, rather. He is known, famously known as... Manual, Sweet Daddy Grace. And uh, he, he had churches all over the country. And um, started way back when. We, I mean, I think 1920s. But I'm going to read some facts for you. Um, I know of his family. I met several people in his family. and um, And they're wonderful people. Never got to meet him, um, but, uh, you know, many people in the city didn't know of him when he was around the city. All right. Marcelino Manuel de Graca. Parents were Manuel and Gertrude de Graca. Um, Marcelino de Graca's siblings group consisted of one brother, Benaventure, Four sisters, Eugenia, Sylvia, Amelia, and Louise. The, um, he was born January 25th in Brava in the Cape Verde Islands, which is um, on the west coast of Africa. It was then a Portuguese possession of the west coast of Africa. There was no verifiable information to confirm Grace's exact date of birth. Um, but most sources either state 1881 or 1884. The family of Manuel de Graca, the father of Marcelino, arrived in America at a port of New Bedford, Massachusetts. Aboard a ship called Freeman in May 1902. It was unclear whether Marcelino was aboard the ship in 1902, but the ship manifesto shows that he visited America in 1903. And in 1904, he came as a captain, sorry, a cabin passenger aboard the schooner called Lucia. Marcelino Grace married twice. His first wife was Jane Jenny Lomba, a Cape Verdean woman also known as Jenny Lombard. They were married in 1909. They had a daughter, Irene, in 1910, a son, Norman, in 1912. Norman died in 1947. Whether they officially divorced was disputed. His second wife was named Angelita Montana, Manta, um, sorry, Montano Grace, a woman of Mexican descent, where he married in 1932. They had a son, Marcelino, in 1935, and they divorced in 1937. Whoa. He's going through wives like anything. <laughs> In her book, Daddy Grace, Maria W. Dahlman notes that the entire de Graca family were Roman Catholics in their homeland and open up to different forms of Christian experience once they immigrated to the United States. The U.S.-based Protestant Church of Nazarene of the Nazarene was the first non-Catholic Christian church to establish a mission in Cape Verde in 1909. Sorry, 1900. 
Bonaventure de Graca, the brother of Marcelino, would later become a church, a Nazarene pastor in the U.S. Marcelino, however, was said inside of the Graca family, according to her research, to have always been a special child. Unlike the conventional ministry of his brother, he went on to establish a unique and independent Christian ministry after becoming a famous bishop. It was recounted that as a youth, he had received a commission to preach directly from God. United House of Prayer. After leaving his job as a railway cook, Marcelino de Graca, using um, the using a version of his name, Charles Manuel Grace, began the title bishop. In 1919, he built his first house of prayer in West Wareham. Massachusetts, at the cost of $39. Go figure. He later established branches in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Newark, New Jersey. Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, Bishop Grace traveled America preaching and establishing the United House of Prayer for all people. The Constitution and bylaws of the United House of Prayer promulgated um, in 1929, stated the purpose of the organization in the pertinent part was to erect and maintain places of worship and assembly where all people may gather prayer and to worship the Almighty God, irrespective of denomination or creed. He traveled extensively throughout segregated South in the 1920s and 1930s, preaching to uh, integrated congregations years before the civil rights struggles in 1950 and 60s, and the religious uh, movements which followed. Bishop Grace died in 1960 and is buried in Prime Pine Grove Cemetery in New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is a huge, well, big monument. Not huge, but big monument. And um, I seen it, been there, said a couple of prayers there. So, it says, and all this information is from Wikipedia. It says, Faith Healing Savior. For Bishop Grace and his followers, the miraculous stories as told of the apostles in the New Testament of the Bible did not end with their deaths. Grace asserted that such miracles were available again through him. And as Daddy Grace, the bishop, the leader of the United House of Prayer, he was well known for and respected by his followers as a faith healer and miracle worker. Grace also claimed that by power of the Holy Ghost, he could raise dead the dead. One such person who claimed that he did was his younger sister, Jenny Eugenia, who reportedly died and was raised again by his grace. She would accompany Grace in his missionary tours and testify to the fact style. Hmm. This is, uh, Grace was an early prototype of what is, is now understood in the Western culture as a celebrity preacher. Active during the early mid 20th century, Grace used attention getting maneuvers such as wearing loudly colored suits with bold, different colored piping, shiny buttons along with his glitzy Expensive jewelry and long fingernails, not painted. And they were long. If you Google pictures of him, you'll see them. All right. 
legacy and followers, the most notable organizational outcome of the 40-year ministry of Bishop Grace in the United States of America is the religious denomination known as the United House of Prayer for All People. Each successive, successive leader, Bishop of the United House of Prayer for All People, continues in the one-man leadership style initiated by Bishop Grace. And each successive bishop is called Daddy in turn. Besides the United House of Prayer for All People, other U.S. denominations also trace their origins to the mis missionary or ministry of Bishop Grace. Prominent among them is the New York City-based House of the Lord of Pentecostal Church on the Mount. Mm. So there was many, many things um, about Daddy Grace, but I can say that his church is still standing. There was an older church, which is very small and uh, compact. Um, they had a kitchen downstairs um, where you could get food, um, a lot of soul food. And uh, which was nice that we had it here up north, you know, that we can have that, you know, it was, it was, it was very, very, um, to me, it was a treat, you know, I can go there, and you could smell the food all over the neighborhood. And uh, it was until this day, now that the new church is built, the kitchen is still open and still smelling the neighborhood up with some very, oh, I mean, the aroma is nice, and you can smell it um, from blocks away. It's very, very um, good food, tasty, you know, from cornbreads, barbecue chicken, barbecue ribs, greens, collard greens, um, Wow. Meatloaf. Pies. It just goes on and on. It's just so much. And it's well worth the price. When you close the container, it's barely grasping. You know, it's barely locking. And, con and they fill the plate up, and it's well worth it. And it goes to the church. All right. So today I was talking about Sweet Daddy Grace. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos about them. There's different, um, events and functions that are still going on. The amazing thing is that his name is, uh, is just like my grandfather's name pretty much, you know, and, uh, and we're from Cape Verde. So a lot of things, uh, so in common, he, this area, New Bedford is, probably has the most largest Cape Verdean population in the country. Um, so, you know, it, it's, uh, everyone ventured, everyone had to go here, come here. And the thing was, that this is where all the work was. This is where you can get a job. You know, no questions asked. If you wanted to work, guess what? They were gonna they were gonna allow you to work from the waterfront to the mills. Um, you know, there was plenty of work for everybody. All right. Well, that's gonna be my Black History from New Bedford, Massachusetts, for the day. Um, if you want to know more about Sweet Daddy Grace. Like I said, you can go on YouTube, you can Google him. There's plenty of facts out there. These facts that I mentioned today are from Wikipedia. It's a great source. And um, so, but I appreciate you listening to me. I appreciate you listening to me on replay on YouTube and on LinkedIn and Facebook. 
where I do share all my, my, my podcast. So thank you very much. I will be back on tomorrow to give you some more facts about you know, black history from New Bedford, Massachusetts. All right. And uh, I have some guests coming up uh, next week. I had a friend named uh, Jason Mello, DJ Jason Mello. We're going to have him on here. It's the second time he's been on the podcast. First time he's going to be here on Fireside. I wanted him to experience this uh, great platform. And um, and we're just going to talk shop, you know, just whatever it may. It just might be a conversation, but uh, I'm just glad to have him on. He's a good man, good dude. All right. And it comes from a family of DJs. Starts from his father and ends up, you know, going down from him and his, himself and his sister. And they were all great. They were, his dad passed away, but they were all great. They were all great. Played some decent music. And uh, so I can't wait. That's uh, March 1st. All right, everyone. Well, I'm going to let this this weight bot sing to us this lovely tune and I'll see you tomorrow.